Now what we did the last time we worked on this. I'm from doctors. Oh, the doctor's calling. I'm in big trouble. The last time I worked on this, I want to get, we've got the fiberglass drying. It's been sitting up by the heating vent overnight. West Systems resin cures up easily in 24 hours by heating vent. You could probably do this 10 hours later. It wouldn't even be a problem. But I like to look at the part from every dimension. Make sure I've got that there are no real spots that need to be addressed here. And, and it's my, uh, I'm sorry to report, I didn't get this tool. I was supposed to get a tool in Harbor Freight. Our friend John had told me about a thing to trim fiberglass. And I looked in Harbor Freight, they didn't have it. So John, I'm still looking for it. It's a $20 tool that I can use to cure this, but I will get to it. That's, that's on my list. So I have to trim this the old-fashioned way, which is a little bit of an inconvenient thing. In the past, I've just taken a Dremel tool with a parting wheel and cut all that off to begin with. That goes pretty quick. Trim everything off. And again, one of the things that I was trimming this with aircraft shears here, I got a little frustrated here because what happens, this thing turns into a porcupine and you wind up getting splinters and everything. And John, you're right about it. That I'm going to get that tool, that's for sure. Oh boy, it'd be an upgrade. Anyway, but we're doing this the old school way. Sanding drum, Dremel tool, sanding blocks. No secret to any of this. All redundant stuff. Now, the, the fiberglass that's on here, of course, has a wrinkly, the, it's, it's rough like the fiberglass is. So, step one is to get it flat. And you can get in all the corners and edges with a Dremel tool. That's nice. You can get in and... and any, any of the inside corners that you need to address and a, a combination of a parting wheel, a sanding drum, any of these things. The orbital sander, the little Ryobi guy is a handy thing to have. Trues up the bottom edge which is going to be one of the one of the things we're going to see. We'll actually see that on the uh, on the final part so I want to have that to be a nice edge. All of the radiuses now, the radiuses are easy to do with the Ryobi tool. And this is not a, not a high skill thing, it's just a messy job. Now when Larry makes some of his, we're going to make some parts for his track bike eventually, I know. Uh, we're going to introduce him to this method of making a part, which it's just the question of labor here. You're just sanding and sanding and the dust is blowing away in the wind. Real nice if you can do this outside and just let the, the windier of a day it is the better. The fiberglass eventually sands down flat. We put four layers on there and eventually of course it's just relatively flat except for the little pinhole parts that uh, where the resin doesn't go all the way in. Again, none of it is rocket science. Nothing here that uh, no rockets going to the moon yet. And this is one of the things that now by doing a final sanding with the block I can get my radiuses and I can put any custom cuts or shapes or anything in there that I want. And I use really rough paper. This is 60 grit sticky back to just grind away any shape that I want to get into this part. Again, look at what a beautiful sunny day. I was thinking halfway through this I should be out riding. But anyway, I wanted to see how this part... My goal was today to get this part just in one piece. So I could look at it and kind of do a test fit. Look around on the bike, see if I liked it. Again, it's got the look of a big butt seat. Which is, that's what I was looking for. I didn't want it to look like a modern sport bike seat. Coming to a point, here, this is, you can see, one of my tricks. Just take a garden hose and get rid of all that dust before it winds up in your lungs or in a house. We're done with that. The seat is ready. We need to make a, a a way of I guess just wiping it down with some M600. Clean it up first. It actually changes color when, when it's wet like that. It goes back to the resin color. 
Now what I thought I'd try, I did this with Sophia when I painted Sophia. I used this two-in-one filler primer because I have a lot of pinholes to fill in there, a lot of little spots. And this, this primer is really, really thick, but I found another trick that works great. Since I'm trying to fill all these pinholes, now polyester resin usually has a lot more pinholes than this, but even so, this has, it's because of the, the, the four ounce cloth just has a, a roughness to it. So what I did, and I've done this in the past, I painted the whole part, put plenty on, really just, just on purpose, get some runs in it even, it doesn't matter. Get it plenty, plenty, plenty of material on there. You know what I do is before the, before it dries, I take a roll of paper towels and just keep wiping it with paper towels and forcing it down in <coughs> into those little pinholes. And that really is a great way to do it. And of course, a lot of it comes off, so it's always a good idea to buy an extra can of it. Again, I get all this in Lowe's. Then once that dries up, sand it with some, you know, 150 grit or whatever, and then put a regular coat of primer on with no runs. And then, of course, the trick is put it up by the heating vent to dry. Now, before we go on to the next step, that's got to pretty much dry overnight. Then we have some fitting to do. We have to make the edges, we have to pull out the inside, and then the fun part, test fitting at the bike, which we'll do probably tomorrow. <laughs>